This is Karen Launchbaugh at the University of Idaho, and today in the Rangeland Principals class, we're going to talk about plant response to grazing. Now, we've talked before in this class that grazing and fire are two really important and inherent um, disturbances in rangeland systems. But when grazers come along and they remove the photosynthetic material of a plant, you'd think that can't be good because plants survive by photosynthesizing and creating energy and, and uptaking nutrients. And so if an animal comes along and removes that photosynthetic material, you'd think that can't be good. But the plants on rangelands co-evolved with herbivores. The, the herbivores were always there. So plants have some mechanisms to deal with this disturbance. And that's what we're going to talk about in this presentation. The main two strategies that plants use to, to survive grazing events is one, they might invest in structures and chemicals to simply avoid being grazed. So the first are avoidance structures. The plants have developed in time, over time ways to try to even avoid ever being grazed. Second would be tolerance structure, tolerance um, factors. So that plants essentially know they're going to be grazed, so they just find a way to recover after a grazing event. So let's first talk about avoidance. Uh, those would be things like thorns, spines, or awns. Those would be physical structures that the plant has made that either slow down intake or cause pain. And in both cases, they're things that make the plant unpalatable. Animals would just pass it by as they're going uh, about their daily grazing um, activities. Avoidance structures can also be chemical. We talked about these um, as toxins and antiquality factors. These compounds can kill the animal, they can make it sick. Um, so making an animal sick makes it so it, it doesn't like the plant, the plant becomes unpalatable. So previously we learned um, tail cup lupin up on the right hand side. Um, again, it, it has alkaloids in it, as does tall larkspur, which is um, in the middle here. And then uh, that's the plant that's terribly deadly. Sagebrush has terpenes in it that make the digestive system less effective, especially the rumen. They kill rumen microbes. And then here's an interesting one. Do um, you recognize this plant? Leaves of three, leave it be. On the left here is uh, poison ivy, and it is one that creates, has a toxin in it that creates uh, skin discomfort. So plants do actually leave it be when, I mean, animals leave it be as they go by. Uh, they don't eat it because of those toxins. So it could be physical or chemical that the animal, I'm sorry, the plant is investing in compounds and structures that um, just cause the animal to pass it by. The other set of, of uh, ways that plants deal with herbivory is called tolerance. So they simply invest in structures in their physiology that allow them to tolerate just put up with grazing. So they know grazing is going to happen. They live in a grazed environment, and they, this is how they respond after defoliated. There are about three things that would affect how well these structures work and, and whether the, animal, the plant does survive well after grazing. First is location of growing points. Second is the resources that are available for recovery. And third is how the plant um, creates carbohydrates and uses energy for growth. So let's start with growing points. They're the most important factor. Now, uh, when a plant loses um, photosynthetic material or plant material, not everything is equally important. The one thing that really is important is meristems. Meristems are these um, areas in the plant, they're small buds in the plant that are the growth points for new leaves and stems. So if you look at them under a microscope, they're just a, an area that just has a, a lot of tiny, tiny cells all pushed together. And as the plant grows, those cells just expand and, and new stems and leaves are created. Um, grasses keep those um, meristems in, at the base of the plant, way down at the base, especially in the spring, that you can't even find them. They're right at the ground surface. Um, forbs and shrubs keep those meristems at the tips of the branches. So that's one thing that is that creates a difference between how grasses respond to herbivory and, herbivory and how shrubs and forbs respond. In both cases, it's important to keep the growing points away from herbivores. The grasses do that pretty easily. They keep their meristems at the base. 
uh, for quite a lot of their life. And when they're at the base of the plant, uh, they're not susceptible to removal by herbivores and or fire for that matter. Uh, the another way to keep them out of the reach of herbivores is put them at the top and, and grow up high and, and, and get them out of the reach of herbivores. And that's what uh, this uh, curly mountain mahogany plant is doing here. It's got most of its growth points way at the top canopy of the plant out of the reach of herbivores. So how a plant responds to herbivory depends on whether it's lost meristems or not and the way that it survives or the way that it tries to reduce its chance of losing those meristems is by putting them either right in the ground surface or out of the reach of herbivores at the top of the plant or maybe even just among the branches of a plant. So let's look a little bit more into grasses. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but here is a growing point of a plant, the elevated growing point that's kind of starting to grow up. When, when grasses start when they're young, they keep those meristems right at the base. And then at some point they do go through this telescoping of the leaves up and they produce seeds. So those little meristems are at the base. And when the plant starts to flower and produce seed, it telescopes them up to the tip of the plant. So some plants keep those uh, meristems at the base longer. Okay, this top diagram here is a diagram of Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass is what a lot of us have in our lawns, and we mow it, you know, once a while. I don't mow mine very often, but some people mow it once a week or more. And so the plant has to have ways to survive that grazing, essentially, that mowing. And the way that they do it is they keep the growing points way down to the ground surface for just as long as possible. They don't even flower if you keep mowing them. They will just keep those growing points there. The plant will be mowed, and then it'll start regrowing so that those, the mowed part just keeps getting extended up into the plant and gets kind of ragged as the plant grows. But it's always keeping those meristems way at the base. Other plants, this is an example of switchgrass, they don't do that quite as well. They um, put their, um, they telescope up their uh, combs really quickly. So their growing points are much higher on the plant. And those growing points are susceptible to removal by grazing or mowing. When the growing points are removed, then the plant has to start over again. It has to go back to basal buds. It has to go back to meristems to try to create new leaves and stems. So it's kind of game over. And once you lose your meristems, you got to go back to square one and start um, producing more buds and, from the meristems and then create whole new combs. So that, when, when the meristems are removed, it takes a while for the plant to recover. So one of the things that plants can do is keep those meristems out of um, the reach of herbivores. They can keep them low to the ground and they can have a lot of them. So some plants respond better than others and it depends on where their meristems are. Other things that affect how a plant recovers after mowing or grazing. One is how many resources are there for recovery. On the left hand side, we have a beautiful rangeland in the spring and on the right hand we have another piece of rangeland not far away but it's a salt desert and it's a real kind of tough place to make a living not much water not much rain salty surface and it's late in the season if there's a plant on one side of this uh, chart or the other that gets grazed which one is going to have a greater ability to recover now it's kind of a no-brainer Plants survive better in the spring than in the fall. So plants that are grazed in the spring when there's lots of nutrients and water to recover are able to recover. If they're grazed in the fall when they've elevated their meristems and there's not many resources left, it's hot and it's dry, it's harder for them to recover. They may just go dormant. Uh, it's also more moist ecosystems are better than dry ecosystems. So for example, we see that in riparian areas, where there's you know moisture along the stream, plants can often recover because they have water, have the moisture to recover and the time to recover throughout the season. So the resources available to recover are important. Another aspect that explains how some plants are better at recovery after grazing than others is how they allocate carbohydrates um, or energy resources in them and to provide for regrowth. Uh, this is a picture of crested wheatgrass. It's a plant that has sort of a super plant ability to mobilize carbon uh, when it's grazed and reallocate that carbon to uh, photosynthesis and to creating more leaves and stems. So uh, some plants just are able to mobilize 
their energy resources in response to grazing. So the plant needs leaves to photosynthesize and create more energy. And also it, the plant needs energy to be stored in the roots and that the energy in the roots can really create a kickstart if the plant needs to um, recover from grazing or to store energy in the roots for a kickstart in the spring when it starts warming up again and the plant needs to produce new leaves and stems. Uh, again, that just varies depending on the morphology and physiology of the plant. Some plants are better than others. Let's talk a little bit more about carbon or energy. What happens during the dormant season? So we have crested wheatgrass here again on the left, okay, but this plant is definitely dormant. It's done everything it needs to do for the season. So if we remove stems and leaves at this time with grazing or mowing, it really has no effect on the plant. It's like cutting your hair. Your, your hair is essentially dead. If you cut it, it's not going to affect your hair. And the same with plants. At this point, um, cutting this plant is not going to affect the physiology of the plant. Um, it is important to keep organic matter around in the ecosystem to stabilize the soil and maybe for a wildlife and maybe for some keeping some snow and such around the plant for warmth. But really, it's not going to affect just the plant is not going to try to photosynthesize again this season. It's gone dormant. Now, that's different between grasses and shrubs. So on the right hand side, we have a picture of a shrub. And this it's a little different for shrubs because they actually don't go dormant. These stems are alive all winter long. This is shad scale salt brush, which is out on the salt desert, just like crested wheatgrass could be. <clears throat> but in the winter, those those stems and leaves are, they're alive. Uh, so the plant is actually storing its energy in those stems. It's great for wildlife and livestock because they can use this as a, as a source for vitamins and minerals and energy throughout the winter. And so on the salt desert, it's known as a great winter grazing area because those nutrients are, are up in the plant. Um, however, if you do graze the plant, it's alive and the plant is removing um, photosynthetic material. It's probably not going to try to grow back again in this winter, but in the next spring it can be a little harder on the plant because it's lost meristems and some material. So grazing grasses in the winter can have very little effect, but grazing shrubs and for grazing shrubs in the winter uh, can, uh, can be detrimental because you're removing meristems. So effect of grazing in the winter can vary a little bit. So th those are just a few really basic principles about how plants respond to grazing. Take home messages, uh, plants evolved in a grazing, in a grazed ecosystem. And so therefore they have mechanisms to either try to avoid grazing or tolerate grazing if it happens.